appreciate your presence. Uh, you know, we finished up uh, minor prophets last week, so we're going to start on seriously. We're going to start on Hebrews uh, this time. <clears throat> Before we do, though, let's uh, have a short prayer. And the Father, bless this study of ours as we engage in the things that Thou hast left for us to, to direct our lives that we may know the way home to heaven. Bless each one of us as we study, not only here, but during our personal time, that the wisdom that we gain from Thy Word will be not only a benefit to us, but those round about us. May you continue to bless this church as we dwell upon thy word. May thy richest blessings be on those who fight the good fight and are concerned about those who are lost and and those who are engaged in various and sundry uh, troubles in this whole world. And keep us in thy care and in the care of Jesus who loves us and died for us. In his name we pray. Amen. Now, some of this I probably have already uh, gone over. Kind of like one of those things you put put right up against your larynx, and so you can hear it. Anyway, <clears throat> and we I think we had uh, you know I can't really remember where we've been, but I think we had uh, talked about who was this um, epistle addressed to, <clears throat> because it says to the Hebrews. But there's nowhere in the uh, book itself that, that says it's addressed to the Hebrews. You know, in Paul's writings, his other writings, he would always say to the Romans or Colossians or or what have you, and that's the, how the uh, book got his name. But he does not do that if he is, in fact, the uh, author of this epistle. He did not do it. And even if he wasn't the author, nobody did it. <laughs> nobody said it was written to the Hebrews, but uh, somebody did, and it was done very early. And all the uh, inspired writers uh, in their addresses address you know they, who they are talking to. But apparently this name was affixed to the epistle by those fairly early. And it may have been uh, still during the apostolic age when, that, when the name was affixed to it. We can't be for certain. I wouldn't be dogmatic about that. But uh, You know, the question would come up naturally is... Uh, who are the Hebrews? Who are the Hebrews? Well, the, the name was first used in Genesis, but it was not used very often. <clears throat> and uh, it seems that whenever the word Hebrew was used, it was used to indicate those in the uh, Palestine, what we would call Palestine, Judah, Israel. And it was never used to refer to Jews in general. If you're talking to somebody outside the uh, uh, Judah and Israel, and you're talking about Jews, you would say Jews, you, you wouldn't uh, say Hebrews, but if you're talking about somebody in that land, whether it's talking to somebody outside, and they may not necessarily call
call themselves that, but especially if you're talking about somebody outside, uh, you probably be referred to as Hebrews. So <clears throat> it's a way to distinguish. I don't know if there's a uh, uh, modern equivalent to that. Uh, I ought to be able to think of something about Texans, but I can't <laughs> really think of anything like that. <clears throat> I remember that uh, the old story about this uh, fellow. They were at, uh, well, he and his wife were at a convention, and he was always going up and asking people if they're from Texas. He'd ask him, everybody, and his wife said, finally said, Hun said, you don't need to be asking people if they're from Texas. <clears throat> if, they're from there, if they're from Texas, you'll find out soon enough. So maybe, maybe that's the same thing with uh, Hebrews. Uh, you'd find out soon enough that they're from uh, Hebrews. <clears throat> but you look at, uh, I've mean, got some scriptures. And you look at the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the second chapter of uh, Acts, when he's talking about all the uh, people that had come to Jerusalem, and they were, it says, dwelling in Jerusalem, starting the fifth verse, dwelling in Jerusalem. That doesn't necessarily mean they're living there. They're dwelling there because they had come there for the uh, to worship at the temple. They're devout men from every nation under heaven. And he goes on to say, uh, look, said, are not all these who speak Galileans? You know, Galileans had, a, had an accent, kind of like, you know, certain states in the Union have, have an accent. He said, how is it that we hear each and all language and you know, the born Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Mes Mesopotamia, and some of these were Jews and proselytes. There's a mixture of them. But those from these various lands, they didn't call them Hebrews. They called them Jews. And you go down to uh, Acts, the sixth chapter, <clears throat> verse uh, 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplying, there was a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. Because the widows, of course, neglected, and that's where the uh, when the deacons was, were appointed. But there's two groups that are distinct, distinguished here. One is the Hebrews, and the other is the Hellenists. But they're all Jews. So what's the difference? In this case, the Hebrews are those that live there, and in, 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 they never never left. They live there in Judah and uh, in Israel. But the Hellenists, you know, through all these, uh, the diaspora, you know, the dispersion, when all these Jews went all over, and they never returned. And that's really how the, the synagogue system uh, took root, because the, these Jews couldn't get back to the temple to worship. So they set up synagogues. But they never came back. You know, the thing is, they established uh, their own livelihood and lives in these foreign lands. And, of course, uh, at that time, Greek culture was uh, very prominent. And so uh, living in these places uh, where the Hellenist culture was predominant, they came to be known as Hellenists. And we look at, uh, you know, Paul describes himself as a Hebrew in, in the Second Corinthians 11th chapter, verse 22. He says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Who are the they? Well, there's somebody that's um, from Judea, Judah, and, and uh, Israel, somebody from there that's giving him some sort of problems. And, of course, we know from uh, the other things that are said in history that these are the Judaizing teachers, those from Judah that are going around saying that you 
uh, have to uh, obey the law of Moses in order to be a faithful Christian. So Paul, in speaking about these people, they're saying that they're Hebrews. He said, really? He said, I'm more Hebrew than they are. So, you know, you got nothing on me. Are they Israelites? I'm more Israelite than they are. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So they have nothing to boast of. You know, you can't, they can't ascribe uh, uh, predominance of their message because of their Hebrews or Israelites or the seed of Abraham. Paul is too, and he's preaching something different. In Philippians, the uh, third chapter, uh, verse 5, again, Paul talking about himself. <clears throat> he says, he, he says, circumcised the eighth day, the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of the Hebrews. Again, that's phrase. You, you, you uh, Judaizing teachers, you're saying that you're Hebrews? I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I'm more so than you are. <clears throat> Concerning the law of Pharisee, his credentials were uh, unsurpassed by any of these Judaizing teachers. And so, uh, from this that perspective, uh, the the it is likely that Hebrews was addressed to these Hebrews of uh, Israel, those that had become uh, Christians. And if you recall. <clears throat> uh, that Paul said that these uh, Jews, they needed uh, the gospel as much as anyone. He said in, in Romans 10, verses 1 and 2, and Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for, to God for Israel, that's where the, the Hebrews were, is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. You know, they were still um, practicing the law of Moses, but that had been done away with. So they didn't have the knowledge. In Hebrews 8, chapter verse 13, he says, uh, a new covenant. Because he made the, the, uh, the first one obsolete. Now that which is uh, becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. And it is going to vanish away uh, not too many years after uh, Hebrews was written. And I thought it was very interesting that uh, David brought up, you know, Hebrews 5.12 and then uh, James 1.3.1, 1, 1, talking about teachers. <clears throat> and he says they kind of dovetail each other, and they do. Because in that uh, uh, 5.12 passage, <clears throat> it's, it's almost like, are you kidding me? You've been Christians this long and you still can't teach? You can't discern between evil, which is the, uh, the old law, if they were to uh, still uh, subscribe to the old law that they had to be uh, obedient to it, or the good. And that's the uh, new covenant. He said, are you kidding me? You, you, you don't yet know enough to be able to teach. And then in James he said, no, you don't know, you don't know enough to teach. <laughs> so he said, you better be sure that you do know. So they do dovetail. Well, an interesting, uh, I think we may have covered this before, is uh, why if Paul, in fact, wrote uh, Hebrews, why didn't he affix his name to it? There are indications that uh, certainly we, he wrote it and we went over that. <clears throat> but I think a very good reason is that uh, he was trying to get a message across to Hebrews, those in Israel. And what was Paul? Who is he an apostle to? Gentiles. And they, you know, people knew that he was an apostle of the Gentiles. 
<clears throat> if we look at the uh, 21st chapter of Acts, latter part of that and the uh, first part of Acts chapter 22, he said, after those days we packed and went up to Jerusalem, also some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us and brought with them a certain Manasseh and Cyprus, an early disciple of whom we were at Lodge. And, uh, and when we'd come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly on the following day. Paul went in with us, James and all the elders present. And when we, uh, he greeted them, he told them in detail those things which <clears throat> God had done among the Gentiles. See, he was an apostle to the Gentiles through his ministry. <clears throat> And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law. <clears throat> but they have been informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles, didn't call them Hebrews, <clears throat> to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children nor walk according to the customs. Well, he did say that the, uh, you know, the new covenant replacing the old one, and if you don't do that, fine, but <clears throat> it's not doing you any good. <coughs> he goes on and uh, uh, later on said, we have four men who have taken a vow. <coughs> Take them and be purified with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads and they may know that those things of, of which they were informed concerning you are nothing, but that you yourself also, also walk heartily and keep the law. <clears throat> well, this is a kind of been a good point to make, is that uh, Paul never did say that if you wanted to, you know, you could keep the law, but it's not doing you any good. And, uh, you know, he wouldn't let Titus uh, be circumcised <clears throat> because Titus wasn't Jewish. And he just wouldn't allow him to be forced to, to become circumcised and that, in, in doing so become uh, subject to the law of Moses. He wouldn't allow it. But somebody that was a, a Jew, if you want to continue to practice that, fine, it's just not doing you any good. You know, you're in the new law. So he goes on to say that Paul took the men, and the next day, having been purified with them, entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, at which time an offering should be made for each one of them. Now, the seven days are almost in, ended, and Jews from Asia seeing him in the temple, Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, <coughs> stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him crying out, men of Israel, help. This is the man who teaches us all men everywhere against the people, the law, and this place. And furthermore, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. You know, you couldn't let a uh, uncircumcised Gentile into the uh, temple. <clears throat> but he hadn't really brought anybody, any Gentile in the temple. They just happened to see him with some uh, Gentiles. And, of course, the uh, city was greatly disturbed, and, and the uh, uh, centurion commander had to rescue him. And he, uh, so anyway, down in 34, he said, so when he could not ascertain the truth because of the tumult, he commanded him to be taken to the barracks. And when he reached the stairs, he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the, the violence of the mob. These are Jews now. For the multitude of, uh, multitude of people followed after, crying out, Away with him! <clears throat> then as Paul was about to be taken to the barracks, he said to the commander, May I speak to you? And he spoke in uh, Greek. He replied, Can you speak in Greek? Are you not the Egyptian? So he had been misidentified even by the, the uh, commander. Are you not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a rebellion and led the 4,000 assassins out into the wilderness. But Paul said, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. I implore you 
permit me to speak to the people. <clears throat> so when he had given him permission, Paul stood on the stairs and motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great silence, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language. He spoke to the commander in Greek, and he spoke to them in the Hebrew language. So, you know, Paul was a very well-educated man. And since he could speak two languages, that meant that he was not an American. But Americans can only speak one language. <laughs> Anyway, Paul uh, made his uh, defense, and he said, Brethren and fathers, hear my defense, and he's speaking in Hebrew now. And when they heard that he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, they kept all the more silent. And he goes on to uh, say, uh, give his pedigree, if you will, and he gave the account of his uh, conversion and then when he finally got down to the very end, and when, when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And when and they listened to him until this word, uh, not the depart, that wasn't the word. It was Gentiles. As soon as they heard the word Gentiles, then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out and tore off their clothes and threw uh, dust in the air, so, uh, you know, they knew he was a an apostle to the Gentiles, and the typical Jew in, in Jerusalem could not stand uh, Gentiles. You just couldn't stand Gentiles. You remember when uh, Cornelius came to see Peter? He said, you know, we can't be talking to somebody of another nation. But he said, God showed me that I'm not to... Uh, treat any man as unclean. So that was a hard lesson for him to learn, but that is that was the attitude that uh, the Jews, especially in Palestine, Jerusalem, that area, that's the attitude that they uh, that they held. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Again, those uh, People outside of Palestine, Jerusalem, uh, lived in Greece, Rome, where, wherever it may be, they didn't have the same connection to the temple. And they lived among Gentiles, so they didn't have quite the same attitude towards... Uh, and, of course, Paul converted a lot of them, so it, they certainly didn't have the same attitude towards uh, uh, Gentiles that the Jews in Jerusalem in this case had so I think that is a very good reason and whether it is the reason I don't know because I think the evidence may point to it and this be a very good reason that he didn't affix his name to it because he wanted to appeal to those Jews that were in Jerusalem and Palestine that area he wanted them to read the message because they were, uh, because of all the persecution, they persecuted by, well, you see the attitude towards uh, a Jew that was saying that you no longer had to keep the law of Moses. You saw you see the attitude that they exhibited here, but also they were the Judaizing teachers that said you had to uh, practice the law of Moses. So there's a lot of pressure on these uh, Jewish Christians in, in Palestine, so much so that they, uh, the thinking was, well, you know, it's a lot harder than we thought it was. We didn't expect the uh, Christian life to be uh, such a persecuted life. So why don't we just go back into the, under the Jewish system? Why don't we just give up this Christianity? It was a good idea. And, 
but it just didn't seem to be working out. So why don't we just go back into the uh, Jewish system? Well, Paul knew that if they did that, they'd be lost eternally, and he loved his his brethren, so he wasn't uh, willing for that to happen. <clears throat> well, what's the uh, <clears throat> evidence that this was, in fact, written to Jewish Christians in Palestine or Jerusalem, as the case may be? Well, <clears throat> we, we get certain indications. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that... Uh, it's conclusive, but, you know, it's pretty good evidence, I would say. <clears throat> in in uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 32 and 34, uh, it says there, but recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. And that, that does describe the uh, uh, Jewish Christians in Jerusalem, partly why you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly why you became pa companions of those who were so treated. So that does describe the uh, Jewish Christians in uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem and the surrounding area. <clears throat> uh, for you had compassion on me and my change and joyfully accepted plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and a enduring possession for yourselves in, in uh, heaven. Well, you know that Paul also at one time persecuted Jewish Christians. In Acts 8, chapter verse 1, at that time a great persecution rose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. So we know that the church in Jerusalem was being persecuted. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, and except the apostles. And you know that uh, Paul was consenting to the death of Stephen. He, he didn't actually cast any stone, but he was holding the garments of those that did. So he was consenting to it. And, and uh, <clears throat> he described, you know, all the things that he did against uh, Christians, all the while thinking a uh, good conscience all, while he was doing it, but he was nevertheless persecuting the uh, uh, Christians. So we know that persecution was going on in uh, Jerusalem and and. Uh, Israel, Judah, Judea, Palestine, whatever you call it. <clears throat> we also know that uh, you know Herod um, persecuted the the church. Being a politician that he is, that's not unexpected, I suppose. And I don't know that he did it out of uh, religious zeal. Just he he just Herod. <laughs> In Acts 12, chapter, verses 1 through 4, it says, About that time Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. So we know that there's persecution going on in the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, now these are not Jewish Christians they're talking about, pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. And this was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. So he's going to make a spectacle of uh, Peter. And, of course, Peter was delivered from that. <coughs> now, the question may naturally arise, well, didn't the Romans persecute the Christians also? And we're talking about the first century. We're not talking about later. Certainly they did later. Uh, but generally, the Romans did not engage in persecution of the Christians because they really just considered them part of uh, Judaism. They, they didn't really 
till later recognized that it was, hey, this is different. And we better pay attention to this because it may, anytime there's something different, it may pose a threat to our authority. So that, that did come later. But we read in Acts, the 18th chapter, you look at uh, verses 12 and, and through 17. And it says, when Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul. He, this happens <laughs> wherever we went. It happens to him a lot of times. And brought him to the judgment seat, saying, this fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. Well, what's the law are they talking about? It's the law of Moses. Of course, they didn't bother to tell uh, Galileo that may have been the law of uh, Rome. Sort of had a uh, double meaning. And when Paul was about to open his mouth, Galileo said to the Jews, if it, if it were a matter of wrongdoing or wicked crimes, and, and, and the Romans would crack down on that, O oh, Jews, there would be reason why I should bear with you. <clears throat> but if it is a question of words and names, and your own law, look to it yourselves. For I do not want to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him for the judgment seat. But Galileo took no notice of these things. That's, that says that uh, the Romans were not interested in persecuting the Jews. They were interested in maintaining peace, no doubt. Uh, but when it became a question of Jews mixing it up. He said, don't bother me with it. You, you go tend to it yourself. So, and, uh, uh, well, we got, have a few more things to do. But we'll do it next time. <laughs>